Thanks for joining us. This is our extended interview with Molly McGrath, founder of Hiring and Empowering Solutions. The first part of this video is from our GNGF Live, which happens every other Wednesday over on our Facebook page. The second part here in this bonus extended interview, we're diving into much more detail about hiring, leading, and employee retention. If you already saw the live, I'll put the timestamp to the exclusive extended interview right down here below. Uh, of course, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can follow along with all of our great conversations on legal marketing and the business side of running a law firm. Welcome to GNGF Live, your bi-weekly Ask the Experts about all things law firm marketing and business growth. I'm Mark Homer, author of Online Law Practice Strategies and founder of Get Noticed, Get Found. On this show, we focus on the business side of growing and running your law firm. So I'm really excited to have today's guest, Molly McGrath, founder of Hiring and Empowering Solutions. Hiring and Empowering Solutions offers hiring and training support to boutique law firms and solopreneur attorneys throughout the U.S. I mean, Molly has coached and consulted with over 4,000 law firms in executive level leadership, continuous improvement, team empowerment initiatives, increasing profitability, and much more. So we're going to be talking about the tight hiring market right now, empowering your employees, and employee retention. Definitely a hot topic these days. And as always, be sure to like and subscribe to our page, not just a video, so you can get updated when our next episode goes live. And of course, it never hurts for you to show just a little love and hit that like button on the video too. It does really help us a lot with the algorithms. Uh, we've got moderators in the chat, so please ask questions and interact during this premiere. And if you're watching this in the future, after we premiere, we do monitor the comments and we'll reach out to our guests and answer any follow-up questions you have. It's because we love you all and we love getting to meet you online. And I'm excited to say we'll be in person again soon. So you can find a list of our upcoming webinars, CLEs, and all of our other uh, events we're gonna be speaking over on our website at uh, gngf.com slash events. We have an extensive library of video, including extended interviews, as well as our in-depth GNGF tip series over on our YouTube channel as well. So you can watch those videos, well, after this interview, of course, at the link in the chat. All right, let's get to the interview. Molly McGrath, thanks for joining me today. Oh, Mark, thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Awesome. So, um, uh, you know, I know a lot about you, right? I mean, you've helped thousands of law firms. We've met because uh, we were speaking at some of the same conferences. Um, but for the benefit of the audience, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself and your company. Absolutely. Uh, so I have a company, Hiring and Empowering Solutions, and I have had the honor and pleasure to coach and consult in staff for over 4,000 law firms. Um, I've been in the industry since 1997. And um, I have a podcast that I drop every Tuesday called Hiring and Empowering Solutions and drop a, a blog every Thursday as well. I've written a couple of number one bestseller books. And I'm just really, really passionate about um, creating what I've coined entrepreneurs in the entrepreneur's world. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, podcast is great. Um, can't, can't say enough about it. Uh, uh, I, it's on my subscription list. So, um, you know, of course, I have to listen to our podcast occasionally. But no, your, yours, <laughs> yours is great. And everybody should check it out. So um, we'll make sure we put the link to the chat to, to that podcast. Um, I, it's like I said, it, it's in my feed and comes up all the time. Yeah. Um, and we're going to have a really special guest next week. I believe it's dropping and it's going to be you. Oh, awesome. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I appreciate you inviting me on. And that was a great conversation. We talked about marketing, but a lot of other things too. So, um, but today I want to focus on um, what you do for, for the audience here around, you know, employees and hiring and, and you know, like you talked about entrepreneurs. Um, so, but it's unique, right? I mean, you're working with law firms. What have been some of the big challenges, right? Like working with a law firm to get an attorney to kind of like letting go control of this, you know, the employees and stuff and, and getting that, you know, opening that up and, and you know, bringing somebody in uh, to help out or even just themselves, like kind of thinking about that control of the employees and getting them to, to kind of step up more. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting because people are like attorneys, what, why? And um, I just became really passionate about it. My first job that I ever had was with an organization, a National Network of Estate Planning Attorneys back in, like I said, 1997. And I just really fell in love with attorneys. I realized how there's this stigma out there in the marketplace, in the community, in regards to how difficult they are, how they're arrogant, it's all about the money, what have you. And then when I started coaching them and looking at their books, looking at their process, looking at where they were struggling, it couldn't be further from the truth for a lot of people that were hanging their shingles, what have you. But on the flip side of that, 
They, attorneys, are, and this is no surprise, these are the words they've shared with me, they're trained skeptics. Mm -hmm. They are trained to believe nothing, right? That's their their superpower when they're in the courtroom, what have you. But when it comes to training employees and onboarding employees, et cetera, it really is difficult for them to kind of flip that switch because you're first and foremost, first and foremost hiring human beings. You are in the human to human business. And so my challenges with working with attorneys have been from the staffing side, absolutely, especially in this absolutely insane market right now. Mm -hmm. The unemployment rate is under 1% in the legal space. It's incredible. So attorneys, when I find a rock star and um, present them, they're like, what? They're crazy. I'm not paying them that. I, you know, when I was an associate, <laughs> you know, so I hear all the stories of walking uphill to school both ways in a blazing snowstorm. But it's really difficult to get attorneys to wrap their mind around, you know, it's not the fee of what they're paying, but the cost if they don't do it because they'll call me completely stressed out. You know, many law firms are coming off the best two years of their life. And, you know, especially in uh, personal service industry and things of that nature, and it's not gonna change. So they're on a path of growth, right? You're, you want to be on a path of growth right. and you need more talent. You need human beings so you can consistently level up and you can replace yourself in the firm. So my biggest challenges are really to number one for them to pay for good talent and then number two is for them to really know that they have to invest time attention and feedback into their employees because this is what i hear i don't have time to train i don't have time to meet with my employees what have you and you have to realize if you give human beings which they are first and foremost then human doings if you give them time attention and feedback they won't leave you because especially now it's one thing to hire someone and to find something it's a whole nother ball of wax to retain them and keep them because recruiters are sharks it's shark yeah. infested water and we are trying to poach everyone and anyone yeah and and you see so you have like the you know I'm hiring now, how do I pay, you know, like paying these kind of rates. Uh, and then I think probably more, you know, like not, not more important, but like longer term, more important, right. Is building that culture of, you know, like, like regular feedback and all that. How, how do you work with the attorneys to overcome these? I mean, like th these are, those are big things. Yeah. I, I mean, I get it. They're already time strapped. And so I tell them, Look at the time that you're spending having communication ping pong back and forth on Slack channels and teams and emails and what have you to try to figure out what, where the heck the state of the union is on the client or the matter. If you can have and treat it like I always say, treat it like a locker room huddle before you go on the Super Bowl playing field. Like you need to have a game plan and you need all hands on deck. Hmm. Treat it like a board of directors meeting. If you can have a weekly meeting with everybody in the firm again very much ran like a board of directors meeting it's not a coffee clutch it's we don't want to talk about survivor for an hour and a half that's not the intention of it you have an agenda and i'd be happy to share everything and anything i mentioned today with your listeners but i have a pretty rigid agenda it's one hour it is ran and facilitated by a team leader somebody who's at the helm of the business you're looking at reporting you're looking at caseloads you're looking at the calendar because so go the calendar so go cash flow and so you're paying attention to your business and treating it like a business meeting and then from there having a daily huddle every single day with your team and just everybody being laser focused about here's my top three for the day here were my top threes for yesterday here's how i did here's where i'm jammed up here's where i anticipate getting jammed up today and things of that nature and i've had firms that have completely transformed their firm and doubled their practice and doing that in just 60 days yeah i, I you said something there and and i want to point it out like like the, this this phrase uh, so goes the calendar so goes cash flow i mean that that's uh, I mean, it's huge, right? I mean, like, like really letting the, the, the time away and thinking about if you have resources, right? Like, like leveraging your resources to the best possible is also a key for, you know, good profitability as well, right? So mm. um, I, 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 that's fascinating. So the, the having a, a regularly scheduled, having these, these huddles and stuff. So you've, you kind of build this structure for a firm. So you go in and, and 
They, they, they trust to bring you in. They trust, you know, to hire people. You build these structures and stuff. Give me just a few examples of like where this ends up. Like what are some of the successes look like? Okay, you know, like I, I've done it now. I've done it for a quarter, maybe, you know, like almost six months. What does this look like on the other side for a law firm that's kind of going in and saying, that sounds like a lot of, I mean, that's a lot of hours, you know, that I'm supposed to be billing now managing, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's funny you say, well, they trust you. I'm like, yeah, well, they hire me and then they, they tell me all the reasons why it won't work. <laughs> so it takes a minute. But I have a program called the 66-Day Law Firm Turnaround. And it is very, very intentional and very specific because you it's absolutely doable and possible. I've done this for thousands of law firms. So yes, it's you have your cutting into your billable hour time, what have you, but it's really one hour a week for the attorneys or maybe 30 minutes or two, it could be two hours total for the attorneys to do the weekly all hands on deck and then do the attorney meeting where you're going in depth with the paralegals through the, that's two hours a week. When I start getting in there, one of the exercises I have people do is track their time mm -hmm. for an entire week and write down everything, billable and non-billable, that they are working on. And I will shine the flashlight on actually how they're gaining time by doing this because the time thievery is real. And, you know, the, the ability to be able, you know, time's not even, it's, it's, it's not real. If you can chunk out your time in your day and to run your day, run your business in two hour chunks, it's amazing what you're able to accomplish. I mean, the beauty of race the clock, I always tell people, isn't it fascinating before you go on vacation, the day before vacation, how much stuff you get done and your butt gets in the car or the airplane and you're like, I'm a rock star. Oh my gosh. Like, why can't I do that every day? Right, right, right. <laughs> right? The, the work fills the time sometimes, you know. Yeah. So that, that time audit, right? Like the, the time audit and getting, you know, getting that, that kind of switch around for um, leveraging, right? It's, it's like for a business owner, right? You're, you're leveraging employees to kind of like get more done, you know, and be able to, to be bigger and better. So after, you know, 66 days of, of putting this in, just, you know, you got any stories like, you know, who are some like, you know, that stand out? Can I say like, you know, these were great successes that, that, you know, that we, we've, you know, experienced or shown. I just, I, I love hearing yeah. like the work, but then like the, the success stories of, you know, cause this, it just changes hard for people and in this market, right. It changes even harder. So, um, what, what are, what are some things people can look forward to? Yeah, absolutely. You know, all firms are, are different. Um, my latest success story that we just completed the 66 day on Monday, um, I'll just share solo practitioner, um, wife and daughter working in the business, but they're just helping out where they can, what have you. We get in there and we kick off with a two hour VIP empty calendar empty bank account by and large, you know, enough there, but still waking up at two o'clock in the morning. And um, from there, we really took a deep dive into their people. We outsourced everything in regards to what the attorney was doing from production, estate planning law firm, mm -hmm. so an elder law firm. So we outsourced the probate and trust administration. We outsourced the drafting for them. And then we um, also had the wife start doing the initial consultations because the attorney's conversion rates were not that great because people are walking in and he's giving all kinds of great legal advice and they're like, this is fantastic, thank you, goodbye, and not hiring them. So we really revamped the intake process from client service coordinator answering the phone and then we delegated the um, intake, the initial consultation, might be a term that resonates with attorneys, to the non-attorney. Mm -hmm. And the conversion rate went through the roof. The wife was actually getting a signed engagement agreements, which is a really Love novel it. thing, and a check. And then she was booking out their design and sign meetings back to back. So also it got production. So now we have a process and production's moving. We no longer have files that are sitting on the desk. We created a marketing plan. The attorney was now freed up because he's no longer doing the work and owing the file to actually work on a lot of things that you and I talked about on my podcast, referral management, relationship management, yep. marketing. We hired a, a social media and digital media company. The website's completely done, updated. They now have daily socials going out. They have a webinar that's recorded, Evergreen, and they're driving Facebook ads. Um, Facebook ads there and they actually have leads now 
and, and this was so 66 days. First of all, that that's amazing. But um, what I what I heard in there was the first thing that happened was where are you spending your time and what is not the best use of your time? Uh, you know, like Mr. Attorney, you know, whoever, right, Mrs. Attorney, like that is like that's where you started, and then figuring out how to like fill that in, and then how do we manage and grow and and uh, like, so that process. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, so few people really step back and look at that. Well, yeah, and I'm, it wasn't an easy feat. Listen, attorneys, I, I hear you loud and clear. They are, are nervous, to, especially that initial consultation. And you have to shift your mind. It's not a legal meeting. You're right. not at, at stake for malpractice and all the other head trash you tell yourself. It's not. It's an initial consultation. And we even changed the naming of that because it sounded so clinical um, in regard. And we created it, I think, what we came up with, like your your was your goal setting meeting. Mm -hmm. So really recreating that and speaking into the client's perspective. Mm -hmm. And so it's not an initial consultation. We're not giving you legal advice. We're not diagnosing you. And it's really to figure out what's heavy on your head and your heart. And that's first and foremost. And when people feel acknowledged and they feel validated, they'll hire you. This is a, a psychology meeting. It's a coaching meeting. It's a session to really lock arms and to create that trust. So it was hard for the attorney, but I will tell you, fear is a beautiful motivator. An empty calendar is a beautiful motivator when you're like, well, what I'm doing is not working, so mm -hmm. let's try something else. And within three consultation, the wife had like a hundred percent conversion rate. I'm like, yeah, you're fired. No more initial consultations for you. Yeah, <laughs> for I, the attorney. I mean, it's interesting, right? Because it, it I'm, I'm sure you probably have a lot, a lot of examples too. But it's sometimes it's the people that are busy, but like barely profitable. That you know. Uh, it's almost harder to explain that you're doing things really, really wrong because it's like, but yeah, the cash is coming in and we got my calendar is busy and stuff. So it's almost, you know, reworking something has to be a totally different uh, a process with somebody who's already been, you know, like they think things are okay, but really when you step back and look in, it's, there's a lot of opportunity. Absolutely. You know, I had a, my very first coach that did a whole day on the concept coaching attorneys. He was an attorney about, you know, this concept of busy is important. And when you really start shifting your mind from time management to focus management, and that's the other thing, I did a complete audit of what they, everybody was working on. And that's why I love coaching. You have the accountability and consequences. You know, people will say to me, I don't know if I want to punch you or hug you. And I'm like, well, then I'm doing a good job. Right. That's great. So what, what surprised you? Like, you know, like so you've done this for a while. You've worked with a lot of law firms. <laughs> um, what, there's gotta be something like in your career, right? That's just kind of like surprised you that was, was different or new or just what, what's, what's out there. I'll tell you the biggest surprise to me is that attorneys don't like confrontation, believe it or not. So I would hear from them when they need to have a crucial conversation with an employee or a courageous mm -hmm. conversation with an employee or maybe a vendor they're paying or someone who's 1099, um, that they don't want to have the conversation. They are horrible at firing people. I'm like, wait a minute. You're in a courtroom. Like you're trained to defend. You're trained to debate. Like, and you don't like confrontation. And I will tell you, a hundred percent of attorneys tell me, I don't like com I don't like com confrontation. I can't do it. I I will get phone calls from people and say, Can you fix my employee? And can you do X, Y, and Z? And like, well, I can help facilitate the conversation, but you have to have it. Right. And they're like sheet white. Like they can't have it. They are really, really. They're like, well. I, they, they, I don't want to fire them. They're, they have two kids. And I mean, so they are, you know, empathetic and they, but that was very, very surprising to me. And I would tell you a hundred percent. I hear that all the time from attorneys. That's fascinating. I mean, you know, I, I get that having been doing it now for, for years and years and years as well. Um, so I, I understand that, but yeah, I think that that's, that's probably a, a big misnomer out there. I think there's, um, you talked about the training, right? Like, yeah. uh, you know, like, like law firm, um, you know, like, like, like law firm owners are lawyers first and business owner way back seat, you know, somewhere in there, right? Like, oh yeah, I'm a business owner, you know? Um, so many of them like start that way. And it's, if they're not classically trained, like they're classically trained in the law and the legal right. and stuff and super confident, but as soon as there's a little bit of not classically trained, I, you know, what I've been told and haven't been through law school, but what I've been told from a lot of lawyers is that 
if you are wrong in law school, right, like, like then you fail, right? And so it's, you just are told you have to be right all the time. And to kind of go into an unknown area, like a confrontational conversation, where I'm not sure what they're going to say. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what the best thing to say here. I can right. imagine. Like, like that's hard for a lot of managers. That's really hard when you've been classically trained that that could be wrong, right? So um, I, wrong. It, it makes sense yeah. you step back. Yeah, wrong, and they need guarantees and certainty. Yeah. Attorneys do not do well without guarantees and certainty. They will become absolutely paralyzed until they know the beginning, the middle, the end, and the why, and they have at least like 99.9% certainty they won't they in they'll take you know in action i love i heard a definition recently of roi you know everyone thinks it's return on investment yeah and the, the definition i heard of regret of in action and i love that <laughs> <laughs> right yeah i mean a lot, a lot of times it's the uh, you know analysis paralysis not doing something when you go oh man six months ago if i would have done this how right. Could, like if somebody would have started your 66 days two years ago, where would their firm be? Right. You know. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I get calls every day and they're like, well, let me think about it. And then they call me back six months and they're like have their head between their their knees. And they're like, I know you're going to yell at me. I'm still in the same place. <laughs> yep. Yep. So I want to uh, switch gears a little bit. I mean, it, it tracks, but um, I've heard you talk about this, you know, again, like I haven't seen you speak in in, in uh, conferences. Um, and you've been talking about this, like kind of entrepreneur in an entrepreneur's world. Um, you know, t tell the audience more about that and, and kind of maybe even how you, how you got there. Cause it's something you've been working on for a while. Yeah. So in the late nineties, I would go to all these legal conferences when we were all hopping on planes and going to conferences everywhere. And, um, it, we would be at the break, we'd be at the bar, we'd be at the coffee and standing in line and hearing the. The commotion with attorneys they were consistently you know complaining about their employees they don't care they don't step up and lead all the things that were and they were real some of them were real what have you but I was hearing you know business would be great but for the employees I mean I own a business you own a business that it's a it's a real it's real especially in this market right. and I would hear that consistently and then, you know, I would scooch over to the next table and I'd hear the employees saying, you know, they, they're control freaks. They don't give up control. They don't talk to us. They don't let us take things over for them. They won't delegate to us, what have you. They won't give us time. They won't give us direction, what have you. And so I'm sitting there twiddling my thumbs and then, you know, they come out of the office and have this huge eruption that nobody will help them. They're stressed out, they're taxed, but they won't do the, you know, stop, drop and roll, so mm -hmm. to speak. So they both wanted the same thing. But there was a breakdown in communication. They weren't, you know, the employees that were feeling like they were telling the attorneys that, and the attorneys weren't hearing that. Right. It wasn't landing that way. So I became really passionate about, I'd hear this common thing. I just wish someone had my back. I wish somebody would step up and lead. And, you know, and when it, I took it very, very serious. I'm a deeply curious person. I'm like, this has to stop and it has to get fixed because they both want the same thing. It's got to get on the same playing field. And so from there, you know, coming up with this definition of entrepreneur, which means especially, I mean, most states, a non-attorney cannot own a law, law firm. So there's no opportunity for them is what's between the ears of a non-attorney, right. which isn't true. Right. And so really becoming like that you have the blood, sweat, tears in your blood and your bones for, you know, wanting the business and caring about the clients and caring about the calendar and caring about cash flow and all that. The only difference is your name is not on the, the door and you start to have them shift and hearing them say our clients, the employee using terminology like that. I'm like, yes, that's when you know you have an entrepreneur when they're losing sleep, when they're coming into you and saying, I'm worried that we don't have any appointments on the calendar. <clears throat> That's when you know you've landed an entrepreneur. That's great. So, you you know you have this this book, um, the six six day law firm turnaround, and, and you talk about some some examples. But it just seems like sixty six days, and what you know one that's a very uh, unique number, you know sixty six days. But like how I mean, how does somebody really turn around a law firm in sixty six days? It, it seems yeah. a little ambitious, but you said you've done it. 
Yes, absolutely. And that's why it's a turnaround and it's not a complete transformation, right? It's two, what Tony Robbins calls the two millimeter shifts. Got it. You know, he talks about, so yes, but it is definitely a different, it is turning the firm around because we take your people, your process, your production, and your profitability. And we take each one of them. I have a very methodical process. It's one hour a week that we get on the phone. And then the goal is that you are bringing your team. It's a team-centric approach. So it's not all on the attorney. The attorney is not touching running reports and looking at KPIs. They're not looking at the conversion from marketing to initial contact to the conversion of getting them in there. The attorney's not dialing for dollars and doing the follow-up and thing. Everybody has a role. Mm -hmm. And ideally... The attorney's not doing anything other than giving up control. And they're not they're not doing anything other than saying yes to what I'm asking them to give up. And then, you know, we're looking at their conversions in the conference room. So if their conversion rates aren't at least seventy three percent or higher, then we immediately will fix that within a one hour conversation. I know exactly what's going on. I know why it's not happening. And I'll have them record their initial consultation, send it to me, and I'll have it fixed within one hour. Awesome. So um, I, I wanted to get into uh, like hiring in this economy, retention in this, you know, like all this stuff. Um, but we're out of time on our Facebook Live portion. But if, if you could stick around, Again, we post an extended interview to YouTube. Uh, we often end up doing this because apparently I like to ask too many questions. Uh, must be curious as well. But if you'd stick around um, to answer a few more questions a little bit. Absolutely. I'd be happy to. Awesome. And uh, before we wrap up, though, where can people um, find and connect with you online? Yeah. So obviously on LinkedIn, you can find me there, Molly McGrath or Facebook or Instagram, what have you, the easiest way. Probably to go to our website, hiringandempowering.com and opt in to get our weekly blog that drops every Tuesday or every Thursday and our weekly blog that drops every Tuesday, packed full of tips and techniques to support you and your employees. And uh, can they grab uh, your book on your website then? Yes. Yep. It's all on there. Awesome. So we'll, we'll make sure we throw a link in the chat. So, all right, stick with me uh, one more second. Thanks, Molly. Thank you. Well, thanks for joining us today, everyone. Be sure to like and subscribe to our Facebook page so you can get notified when our next episode goes live. We have new interviews about law for marketing and the business side of running your firm here every other Wednesday. We're going to keep going in the Gene Jeff studios. And you can watch the full extended interview with Molly McGrath, founder of Hiring and Empowering Solutions, this Friday over on our YouTube channel. We'll be diving into much more detail about hiring, leading, and employee retention. And don't forget to download Molly's book, 66 Day Law Firm Turn uh, How to Turnaround Your Law Firm Production, People, and Profit in 66 Days or Less over at HiringEmpowering.com. We'll see you on Friday. Molly, thanks for staying with me. Thank you for having me, Mark. I'm excited. Awesome. So we've got uh, uh, more questions that I didn't get to in our Facebook portion. So um, again, thanks. And I think this is where, you know, I was really hoping to get this because I think this is some of the meat that everybody's really nervous about right now. So you kind of alluded to this. Uh, we were chatting earlier about just how things are really tight and maybe um, salaries are even higher. So what is the state of the employee market? I'm curious, you know, your thoughts on why it's just so tight right now. I mean, we hear about a lot of things, but you know, like what, what are some of the reasons you've been doing this for a while? Um, and maybe, you know, where are we headed? Yeah. Uh, well, it, never have I seen a market like this. I've been recruiting in the legal space since 97. And um, I hate to say it, I don't mean to breathe fear into the room, but it's only going to get worse. So the unemployment rate is under 1% right now for attorneys and under 2% for paralegals. And it's really tight now. And it really was tight prior to the pandemic for certain, but the pandemic has amplified it. Um, because it's it, people, employees are very aware that they are in the driver's seat. Now, I hear from attorneys that, you know, that they're being arrogant, that they're being abusive with the part, the fees they want, you know, the salaries they want. And that's not the case. Finally, I think due, due to social media, due to the pandemic, anybody who's on a path of personal and professional development did not spend their time watching Netflix. They spent their time in webinars. They spent their time on YouTube. They sent, spent their time reading books about, you know, owning your value, owning your superpowers, really getting clear. And people did an audit of their personal and professional life. And, and 
thankfully get, owned their power, got really clear on, because if you have someone like that in your office or a rock star, they're producing tremendous amount of results. But now with attorneys, a lot of them don't want to work in an office anymore. They want to stay home. People got comfortable. Same thing with paralegals. So they're not going back to brick and mortar anymore. And in addition, para, for the paralegals, a lot of them move to a 1099 contract base and attorneys are really struggling with outsourcing and insourcing with hiring independent contracts versus a traditional W-2 employee. So it's only going to get worse. So you have to be willing to really look at your numbers and not get all freaked out. I always tell attorneys, listen, somebody wants $120,000 a year, let's just say, you're not writing them a check today for $120,000. Let's break it down to the monthly. Let's break it down to the weekly and where you can get that profitability from your practice. And if you look at it as a monthly nut versus an annual nut and break it down, then it's, it's a business decision and it's a good business decision because it frees you up and helps you level up. So you cannot be... Um, arrogant and and be like so rigid on not wanting to pay people the fees that they want right now if you want to grow you're going to have to pay so the the interesting thing about that right so it's even paying um but the other side is as important i think um like the retention so uh, how you know how do we you know like help help you know law firm owners out there say all right you know you're going to take some risks you're going to invest dollars there's training time there's managing time there's leading you know how do we make sure we're we're retaining the employees as well yeah absolutely and i love this i'm really passionate about this question because you have to remember if you're finding somebody that will work at the reception desk for 18 bucks an hour or an associate attorney that'll work for 60 grand a year whatever it might be if you're they're going to leave because there is going to be a recruiter that's waving $30,000 more a year in front of them. Now they won't leave if you give them time, attention, and feedback. I mean, it's a relationship. You have to remember that. And it's really simple and it's crazy. Most people lead with quality time. They want quality time. And so if you're creating a culture of growth, you are creating a culture of collaboration, you are creating a culture of communication, people will not leave you. They just won't. So if you have employee growth plans, and again, I'd be more than happy to share my process for this for any of your listeners. If you have an employee growth plan where you're sitting down and you're meeting with every employee, and it doesn't have to be you, you have an office manager, team leader, what have you, COO, PLA, whatever it might be, and, and have a quarterly. Every person has a quarterly plan of growth. If you invest in your, in your employees, giving them coaching, putting them through through programs that are not only about their skills and knowledge, but as their human being to help them develop, they won't leave. My favorite, favorite, favorite um, response when I send out to recruiters, my subject line is, are you happy in being treated and paid well? And trying to get people to at least get on the phone with my recruiters to see if they'd be willing to take our job. And it's so great when people reply and they're like, no, I'm happy. They won't even talk to a recruiter. I'll go sometimes and try to find the law firm and send the attorney a message and saying, whatever you're doing, 10 exit because your employees are happy and they won't even talk to recruiters. So you're doing something right. That's great. Yeah. So the, the, it's, it's relationship, which, you know, again, as you, talked in the on the previous portion you know like uh, worrying about confrontation and worrying about people you know like human beings are going to say in, in a non-logical environment um can be tough initially but uh I, I you know like we're we're big on culture here um and and why we're doing things and where people are going and professional personal growth those things and I, you know like i have to really believe that that's what's you know like kept our team going and growing and focusing mm -hmm. and, and being excited about things. And like you said, treating, you know, the company like, like it's, you know, like caring about the bottom line as much as I do, which is, you know, um, awesome. Uh, but caring about our clients as much as I do, which is even more awesome. Right. So yes. the, like having that, um, have, seeing it work, uh, uh, you know, like I, I, that's why I wanted to, you know, have you on and, and talk about this, having heard you talk is that I don't think people in it, like the law firms, a lot of times we'll talk about the tools and the systems they're using. They'll talk about the marketing to get the leads and stuff, but the team itself, um, you know, building leverage in that and getting getting that you know 
everybody on the same page. I mean, it just pays so many dividends back. Yeah, your people are your greatest asset. They really are because that's the question we're getting asked more now than ever about, okay, tell me about the team. What's, how long has the longest employee been standing? Who did my job before? They're asking really powerful questions about the turnover rate and the culture and the mindset of the owner. Like when they get show up on these interviews, I love the questions that they're asking about, you know, people sell, oh, we give quarterly bonuses and all this and what have you. And I was on an interview last night and a guy said, what percentage of people actually make that bonus? What percentage, of, what, what is the criteria for discerning who gets the bonus or what have you? So employees are asking, candidates are asking phenomenal questions right now because they don't want to move. People don't want to job hop. They really, and we learned that from 2008. And they really, truly want a place that they could call home and they're proud to be at. Yeah, so uh, just to, you know, because we talked about the job market for lawyers and paralegals. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, as you mentioned, it, it really is that, it, I won't say that bad, but it is so tight um, that you, know, you need to kind of be doing everything a little better than everybody else yes. to get the right talent, to keep the right talent. Um, tell me it, one little thing, because you mentioned this on the paralegals, a lot of people kind of going 1099, which brings up some different things, because I mean, one, like as soon as somebody's 1099, it changes how you can even manage that person, right? You can't tell them what to yes. do, where to be and stuff. So. What are some little nuances you've seen with that shift? Because I, I hadn't heard I, it before. Yeah, I love that shift, actually. I think it's because they're coming batteries included. They're coming in with that business owner mindset, right? If they don't do a good job, they're going to get fired. Prob probably way quicker than a W-2 hmm. employee because it's easier to unravel that. And so they show up, batteries included. They are absolutely positively with an business owner mindset. They show up prepared. They show up present. They show up where they are um, coming to you with constant solutions versus constant problems. And so I love when firms can really, you know, the number one question I get, well, what do I, what the heck, how am I going to know what she does all day? I'm like, you're going to know by the daily report that you get, and you're going to know when you see files closing and money coming in. You're not going to question if it took her inch. They're typically charging a flat fee monthly retainer, which is fantastic because you don't have to worry about when you get this, you know, huge invoice every two weeks as completely padded. And if you do, if they do hourly, their attention to detail is ridiculous where they will put not only what their, the, the firms I work with, I have the 1099 contracts, put the matter that they're working on as well, but also the results that are produced for the attorney and for the firm so they can clearly see the value of having this and they never ever question and they can't pay their invoice fast enough. Yeah, that this this um, shift, you know, like when everybody went remote and everybody's used to having people in the office, uh, which I think law firms are very common in that world. Um, I I really think that there is, it's, it's hard for people to get over the, I don't see the person in their seat, therefore, are they working, right? You know, the idea was like, oh, if they're not in their seat, they must be out, you know, at happy hour or something, right? Like, but it's, it, you know, so you got to divorce this idea of if I don't see somebody working, they're not working. It's just get back to, you know, are, are the results there? Or is it, you know, what's like the reports, the data? The, I mean, there should be known results that they need to get done. Is that getting done? Yeah. I, you know, I, I, I'm a fractional COO for a lot of firms and I was on with a client this week and the attorney said to the client service coordinator that was in our meeting, she said, you know, where did Susie go? She's been gone for a half hour, what have you, you know, clock watching her and looking down that they are in office and she's looking down the hall to see where she is consistently. And I said to the attorney, the problem is not, you know, you're wasting so much time on this. This is an underperforming employee that she takes up our time every single week complaining about her. That should have been fired six months ago. She was not a good employee. So when you have employees, if you're in, if you are still in office or they're virtual, what have you, that you're kind of always looking around the corner to see where they're at, what have you. The problem is not 
that, you know, virtual or what have you, or how do I know what she's doing all day? If you feel like you have to watch over a certain employee or all of your employees, it means that they're not, you're not clear on what their value they're creating. They're probably not clear on the value that they're creating and you probably don't have them on a growth plan. So the problem isn't, you know, are they gonna be in their office all day? If you're looking and walking the halls, looking where people, what they're doing, then you have a bigger problem. Totally agree, totally agree, I love that. Um, so uh, to wrap up, um, what's like one piece of advice um, that you could give a law firm you know, leader on getting their employees to really uh, you know, as you mentioned the word care earlier, um, like, you know, to really step up is the, the term I usually, you know, would use, but like, I like that point of like getting them to start saying we, you know, our clients, not, you know, your client is calling, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, again, I'll go back to, it's really simple is consistent communication and checking in with them. So if you have that weekly stakeholders meeting, board of directors meeting with them, you have the daily huddle where you're checking in and saying, what are your top three? What's working, what's not working? You're having a quarterly growth plan meeting with them. I absolutely, they will take a bullet for you. When they're clear on what the core values are, what the vision is, and how they contribute to that. So often I'll hear from receptionists say to me, well, I can't contribute to cash flow. I have no control over, I'm like, you're the sales force. Like, yeah, if you're not tracking every initial consultation and doing follow-up and looking at conversion rates, yes, you, you are. Every person in your firm contributes to the bottom line and every person it, and make certain that everybody's clear on what their top three revenue producing activities are and then supporting them. And one question, you know, for any employees, that are listening or maybe for any leaders that want to, one of my most powerful question for an employee to ask the employer and vice versa is what are you not seeing that you wish you would be seeing in my role or within the firm? It's a game changer. There's no yes or no to it. It allows people to really do a deep dive and, and as an employer, you have to ask your employees that question of what they're not seeing that they really want to be see. And you have to be quiet and don't debate and defend it. That's awesome. And that's, I mean, if you just put that in your kind of like quarterly kind of plan there and just to ask that question, you're probably gonna find a lot of stuff that are maybe seemingly small too, that are critically important to you know, the company, the employee and stuff, just, just asking that question, right? Like it's not, off, not often it's like, oh, you know, I just wish everybody was paid a lot more. It could be, you know, it, it, it just seems that we're not doing this one little thing and you're like, oh, that didn't even know that. Let's go do that, right? Yeah, you know, and you said something really powerful there because if you get crickets and you're not getting a tremendous amount of depth and information and what have you, then you know that your employee doesn't feel safe. You haven't created. When employees feel seen, they feel safe. And when the employees feel safe, they can create. So when you ask questions like this of your employees and you don't get just this tremendous amount of information and what have you, and you're like nothing, or you'll get one. When I do employee reviews and, and questions, they put like one sentence. I'm like, uh, they don't feel safe. We have to go back to the five dysfunctions of a team. Yep, that that feeling comfortable to have a open and honest conversation, um, it, you, you have to get there. I totally totally agree, and and it's it's time in there, right? Like you said, it's you know having structured time where where that relationship and communication can can start. So yes, love it. Thank you so much for sticking with me and diving into this. I, I think um, hopefully everybody uh, you know from Facebook comes over and watches this because this was probably some of the the like amazing gold of like all the little nuggets here of of, um, you know, just take away value. Thank you. Hey, what's up? I'm Josh. Thanks so much for joining us. If you feel like you learned something today, think of how beneficial it would be to chat with myself or another one of our marketing consultants one-on-one. -on -one. Go ahead and visit our website to schedule your free consultation. It only takes a minute.